Okay, so uh, as we've been announcing, uh, today we'll take some time to, um, to just ask some questions from uh, based on your reports, right? Um, so that um, each of you can just respond. So it's not going to be a long drawn um, discussion, like I said, uh, maybe one question or maybe two, um, maybe a follow-up question um, for each one of you uh, who is here. Uh, let me see. We have about ten people here, so yeah. So that's uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, I've uh, I've been through some of the reports, not all, um, but um, yeah. So let's uh, anyway. We'll just go ahead. Right. Okay. So uh, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, I'm just going to ask a question, and um, you can. Uh, I'd like you to you know respond uh, very briefly and to the point, and um, and then we'll move forward. Right. Okay. Okay. So first name is um, Abhishek Mitra here. Um, okay, let me see. Abhishek Mitra is not there. Okay. Okay. So probably um, Abhinas, if you can, um, yeah, if you can respond. Um, okay. The question. Yes, okay, you, you, yeah. So you um, actually. Um, wrote about employ unemployment right unemployment and churches uh, unemployment uh, among the youth and um, the effect of that the outcome of that so the uh, question is um, you know can you give some examples of churches uh, like in your research that are already involved in you know facing this challenge of alleviating unemployment um, maybe in the Christian circles or maybe in secular circles. So um, if you can share about their work, um, yeah. Uh, Pastor, actually, yeah, uh, regarding my city, Raul uh, yeah. actually, I don't think so. I don't think so, like, even one church involved in this ministry. Yeah, they're helping. They're helping, like, in a random. They go to the poor colonies and uh, slums area they just help but it's not like uh proper in proper planning mm, so yeah so so uh, you know particularly with the um, unemployment like in what areas do they help maybe it could be one thing you know you've listed a lot of things that the church could um but um maybe if it's even if it's one thing that they are doing um and uh, like what kind of a church it is and so on that will give us some insight yeah. I'm sorry, Pastor. Your I think I don't know. I think your voice I or my network it's breaking your voice actually. Okay, okay. Let me just repeat that question. So uh, you know, even if you can list one thing, one or two things, like you have actually given a lot of things that the church can do. So even if it's one or two things that. Uh, churches in your state, you know, in in uh, or in that city, Rurkela. Uh, yes, sir, if they are involved in, if you can share that, uh, that will help. Yeah. Pastor, for me, what I have seen is in the places. Uh, I think education system and it's most important because uh, in our case, what happens is they just do study get education but uh they don't have any purpose it's like you're just seeing one another that does so one thing is i would say it's a education system like in a proper way if they are doing uh if they are studying if it, they're taking some stream or it could be any subject so it has to be further plan so that what they so what they can understand mm -hmm. and the second thing would be I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, so, uh, sorry to interrupt, Abhinas. Um, no, uh, I'm not uh, generally asking yes, about sir. what can be done, but I just wanted to know about uh, any church which is doing any any one of those things. You had listed down actually ten or twelve things. So any one of those things, if any of the churches in your, uh, you know, in your city, uh, I'm sure they must be doing at least, you know, yes, to yes. some extent. So uh, I just wanted to know what it is okay. and how they are okay, doing okay. it. Yeah. Okay, Pastor. So it's basically helping people, Pastor. Like, uh, so we can find more of the poverty in the places. So basically, giving them food, it could be rice or it could be anything. Just helping them, helping them in the poverty. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right, Abhinash. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. Right. Um, okay. I think we have. Okay, Chris, uh, would you like to go next? Uh, Chris, just wanted to know um, from you. Um, see, um, so the interesting topic about uh, you know drinking alcohol that's prevalent, uh, uh, you know, among the Christian community. You've actually done a, a fair uh, you know research on that. So I just wanted to know, like, what um, you know from all these uh, respondents, uh, what role models? Or messages um, have the respondents been exposed to? You know, when it comes to alcohol, uh, when I say role models or messages from the church, you know, from the Christian community, from the church, what kind of role models or messages have they been exposed to? Because from from all the responses, I see that uh, most uh, do not seem to have a like a biblical understanding, right? Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I'm just um, assuming from what I read through. So, um, so what kind of messages have they been? Uh, have you been able to, um, you know, find that? What kind of messages or what kind of uh, role models have they had in the church? You mean a specific person or? A... No, no. no. Uh, basically, you know, um, generally. Sorry, generally, when you look at. Um, these respondents yeah so i think at at at, um, at a high level um, mm. i mean the um, the way they address this question about you know how uh, alcohol would Im impact their their life as a, as a believer um that i think that question the response was very uh, kind of uh, i would say uh, uh, you know, they were they were very sort of you know uh, <laughs> I would say some of them are quite argumentative that you know that that they have you know that they are it's, it's mm. against it's against God's wishes it's against the the Bible um, some of them even said that you know that uh, uh, you know it's a, it's it's a big sin yeah. uh, coming back to your role model I I would think that there was one example of a person who actually talked about alcoholism uh, or the use of alcohol in 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 uh, excessive amounts uh, where uh, he felt that there was an evil spirit mm. and uh, what he did was he he actually went and got uh, uh, you know deliverance done in the church and that miss basically made him uh, you know uh, uh, give up alcohol completely so mm -hmm. that was i think um that was, I think, one example. I think one of the things is that um, uh, you know, um, it uh, the um, giving up of alcohol. At least, what it, I mean, the messages that I got from the responses was that sometimes it is a lot more uh, uh, easier in a sense that you know, in a church environment, in a, you know, getting getting a guidance from 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 people in the church, and also trying to. Uh, you know, uh, live, uh, uh, you know, a better yeah, Christian life. It was mm. easier, but in some cases, some, in some cases, I think they were, they were, it was a little more extreme. And that is where they were, they would, they would want, need to get, uh, get, get help. Mm. And uh, there was one person out of the, out of the 45 responses who actually had, uh, you know, had to, you know, get counseled and also get, get hospitalized. So mm -hmm. I think that was that was one of the extreme cases. Okay, um, just one last thing. So, uh, what, um, in your opinion, after collecting this and you know forming a um, conclusion based on this? So, in your opinion, should the church step up its effort to talk about this more openly? Uh, you know, of course, we're talking about an Indian context again to talk about this because um, you know uh, everywhere the message is that. Uh, Everywhere you see social media, everything, uh, the images and the message that goes with it is that it's it's fine, you know, um, that alcohol drinking is fine if it's in moderation, um, without the underlying, um, you know, seriousness of it being an open door. It it can very quickly escalate to drunkenness and so on. So so, do you think churches should do it? And in also in what way, you know, do you think it'll be accepted? 
in what way should the message go out? I mean, again, I, I would think it is, yeah, you know, in it's it's also in context to you know what what the what the uh, you know the the individual is doing. Uh, if he's uh, you know obviously you know very very uh, uh, you know um, involved in in church activities, um, then you know he will feel more compelled to you know to to give it up. I mean, I'm just addressing your earlier point, you know, uh, which, which is where you know they realize that you know there are some you know inherent dangers uh, and risk involved so um, um but if the person is not uh, you know that involved and you know he's uh, uh, not in uh, you know uh, uh, then that you know that come by that uh, need to uh, to give up uh, moderate drinking will will not be there you know? mm. um but to your point about the church i would definitely think that um, that they had they should reach out you know, because it it is a uh, you know it is a social uh, uh, I would say in some way in some ways it's an illness actually. So you know, uh, particularly uh, you know excessive use of alcohol. Yeah. So I'm uh, sure so, uh, there are. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry, Chris. Uh, just a, a quick thing. Like, so in what way? You know, the thing is uh, having uh, interacted with these respondents and uh, I mean their relationship with church, etc. So in what way should the message go out? You know, in what way is will it be, in the sense, uh, what methodology is it? Should be pulpit? Should it be, you know, uh, uh, like a close group, support group kind of a thing? Uh, in what way do you think will be the most effective? Um, yeah. So I, I I think that it will be a combination of pulpit um, and it may not be just alcohol. It could be alcohol. It could be you know. Uh, you know any 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 other sort of intoxicant drugs or whatever or, or even you know things like uh, you know any any habit forming things like you know pornography and stuff like that so i think there should be uh, definitely a pulpit message and then maybe a weekend uh, you know um, uh, uh, sc school but then again you know in the indian context sometimes people may not want to come for that you know because um, you know it's not uh, something that uh, people may want to you know uh, be uh, make make uh, so i think it it it's, it's it'll be a it'll have to be a com uh, it'll be have a combination of a pulpit which is a, the general sort of uh, uh, you know sort of umbrella kind of message and then um, maybe some kind of a uh, 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 you know um, a, like a, like a questionnaire that i that i sent out mm -hmm. uh, sent out to the church uh, people and people who can respond and who may want to have get help can respond back and uh, you know with the um, um, clearly uh, you know that they i mean the message will have to be clear that you know that that their responses will be treated in in a very confidential uh, confidentially and um, uh, action will be done uh, you know one to one you know in the sense that uh, they will they will be approached by the by a senior person in the in the church and uh, you know they uh, you know any help that is required will be will be then uh, Planned yeah, out. Extended, right? Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so uh, um, Prabhakar Rao, Prabhakar, you'll go next. Okay. Um, so, Prabhakar, the, the, it's a very, uh, very detailed uh, study on persecution and, um, you know, those, uh, it was good to read through. Um, so, I just wanted to know, you know, uh, in all these cases of persecution, um, you know, uh, I'm just I'm just asking this: Is the is is the church, the Christian community, guilty of um, you know sometimes behaving in probably unethical, unscriptural ways, and therefore facing the consequent consequences of it, um, uh, you know, uh, as persecution, you know, as a as a uh, you know, and in 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 response to that or a reaction to that um so that is the that is my first question you know uh, so in all your study in all your research did you find any data uh, any information of the church in its methods you know in its zeal come across or to you know in its zeal for the great commission and zeal uh, in indulging in ways um, that uh, were unethical or unscriptural or you know some some form that would result in these consequences of this you know persecution yeah yeah Prabhakar. yeah thank you pastor for the opportunity um 
yes uh, persecution as it is biblical and uh, it has to be uh, you know come and it has been a long history about the unethical ways uh, where some of the christians come across is one of the reasons as i research or uh, as i found was um some of the some of the preachers or some of the people who are very money oriented and they did because most of the um, non believers um, raised their voice against christian because they said they convert uh, non believers to christians with power money or, or some other stuff and giving them bribe or indulging in a, a so called signs and wonders or doing fake uh, healing things and all that so uh, that was one of the reasons which i found that many of the uh, many of the churches were um, they were like the pastors where they want to show off their skills or um, most of the times they were unbiblical in their approach towards the ministry and uh, some of them offer money and some of them offer gimmicks and acts and all that so which showed other you know community that they are doing some kind of fraud things and also many of the people are like attracted towards uh, towards their uh, gimmicks and all that but not towards the word of god so they started attacking uh, uh, and they are thinking that all the christians were like that and all the people who uh, you know uh, accepted jesus as their personal savior they are not accepted but they are accepted uh, because of the bribe or because of any uh, other luxurious items they received uh, maybe uh, you know uh, kind of a reservation uh, benefits and perks and government jobs and and foreign funds and etc etc so so these are one of the things which i found out uh, and due to which many most of the you know the, the churches uh, especially in the rural areas were been affected badly and uh, all of the you know um, organizations such as vhp bajrang dal zip sena and all the things and all other where and new 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 groups are also you know coming out and and vandalizing the churches and beating the pastors and uh, you know they are not saying so, sorry boss you you're saying yeah. something No, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I think you answered that question. That's fine. So, so what percentage of this is uh, you know in the total picture? Uh, uh, what percentage of that would be this kind of methods um, or the uh, persecution because of this? You know, what percentage of that? What percentage of persecution to the uh, yeah real church or the fake church is possible? No, no. What persecution to the Christian community, right? It's uh, it what what is what somebody could have done somewhere. Also, you know, it's generalized and it's done everywhere. So, what percentage? What would be the you know rough estimate of in all your research? Um, you know, uh, what percentage of persecution would be because of these causes? Um, of course, it's an estimate, but just like to know. Yeah. It, it it is an estimate pastor but mostly as for the current scenario which i like which i've been researching for the past 2 to 3 months i have seen most of the cases when when the accusers were asked why they are persecuting so they are saying that they are rights back converts and they are uh, doing this yeah, yeah uh, but is uh, yeah yeah my, sorry my my question is so, um I, so I, that is the alleged reason but i just want to know like uh, were you able to find out if um, you know yeah uh, with with the data that uh, what what percentage of persecution was due to these kind of uh, reasons you know um uh, from like uh, 2016 onwards um i think uh, 90 plus percent from from 2016 onwards till today 90 percent more than 90 percent of the cases because of this issues have been created and it has been generalized uh, without uh, no matter of the de de uh, denominations and all that the persecution has been generalized uh, and it is one of the agenda and the hidden agenda is something else but i think 90% of the persecution is because of this kind of things mm, so these are the reasons uh, that they are that that is being stated for the persecution is, it? is that what you're yes. saying yes pastor this okay. they, that is one of the one of the you know uh, presentable um, accusation uh, towards christianity mm -hmm. but the hid hidden agenda is hinduras they want to create mm -hmm. a hinduras 
uh, they want to make india hindu ras that is their hidden right. agenda but they are showing it as if like christians are uh, you know converting uh, okay right thank you thanks uh, rubaka thanks for that okay thanks, um yeah, i just want to ask rose uh, since you are here um rose salcido um so you um did a survey um so i just want yeah uh, on prisons right so globally so um you use the term spiritual morale so uh, could you just define that please hi I think Pastor. that's Hi, Hi, good morning. Hi. Uh, yeah, so spiritual morale is, I understand, is a pretty broad um, state, a pretty broad description. But I think what I was wanting to um, look for was um, just the, if I could use another term there, um, how, how their spirits are, like how, if they're like uh, maybe in low spirits or high spirits or spiritual morale in the sense of how um they are connected to a to god or a higher being in that sense so yeah so that was what i was trying to yeah yeah i was, I was just trying to uh, find out whether it's it, you're referring to the emotional state you know whether they are depressed whether they are motivated inspired uh, more or... on more on affiliation with religion pastor so more mm. so um it need not be a church or a, a christianity it could be any yes. uh, religion yes. mm. okay and they and the prisoners um wanting mm. to connect to a higher being um mm. while they're in prison yeah i see okay so um yeah so my question is um you know uh, any recommendations you you presented a lot of data and what was happening in the church so yeah. uh, what would you recommend to um let's say a ministry or a church who wants to make a difference in uh, uh in a in a particular um you know uh, prison um so what would you recommend based on the data yeah yeah so um i guess um different as what i've written there pastor the 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 religious the religion state or um the choice of religion um the prisons the prisoners will have will be as good as who will be those who will minister to them so for example in the case of japan um which is mainly a buddhist or a shinto country so naturally the prisoners would be taught um buddhism or shinto um, for other more developed countries, which are in the USA or mm -hmm. other countries in Europe, um, wherein Protestant ministers or Catholic ministers, um, uh, you know, give uh, serve in their prisons. Right, um, right. I, yeah, yeah, I got that. Sorry, yeah, sorry to interrupt. I got that. But as a church, as a you know, um, um, like as a presentation of truth, as a speaker of truth, yeah. um, you know, of of the truth and hope, you know, what would you recommend uh, like across these kind of, I think, uh, prisons? Yeah, so if, if it were a Christian minister, pastor, maybe um, uh, the longevity of their service and the, you know, just reaching out more and just being persevering in, in uh, what they do for the prisoners. And I also, in my recommendation, I also wrote that it would be good to um, have a follow-up if these prisoners get reintegrated into society, mm. the, the, the ministers in charge of, you know, like um, mentoring them or teaching them the basics, if, if they could also have an outreach in the community for these prisoners who are um, set free if ever they get out in the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great, Rose. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Pastor. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Who else uh, would like to go next? Okay, um, ask. Um, I'm just going based on what I've gone through, read through, right? Um, yeah. So. Um, just want to ask uh, Mr. Rupa. 
Yeah, so uh, Rupa, I just want to ask a couple of questions. First one is this. Um, see, is the open home way of hospitality, right, um, that you very ardently recommend, um, hospitality, and, uh, you know, you said it's it's way of um, showing love for the stranger. Like, that's the Greek uh, you mentioned there. Um, so is it the only way? Uh, or uh, is it uh, for a select few who are called to uh, this way of expression of hospitality? What do you think? Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, yeah. I, uh, I, don't, I don't say it is the only way. And also that, what now, and the extent of hospitality we extend through open homes for each family, I believe it's different according to the circumstances and the leading of the spirit, it's different, sir. I believe that. But we need to have an open heart, a heart and a home, so that when the need arises, we are ready to minister. That's what I wanted to convey and also the need for it. Mm. Okay. I see. Okay. So... Um... So are certain people, so my question is, you know, are certain people, um, you know, so the reason I asked, uh, you know, are called in the sense, uh, you know, are certain people more or given to that, you know, by yes. nature of whatever, you know, life experience or the thing. Maybe some people are private and so on. So, so that's my question, you know. Um, so is it for some, because uh, we know that we all have a, you know, different callings and because of which we are, you know, placed in different ways uh, in the body, like even while, while ministering to the body, uh, like one has a gift and leadership and what we see in, you know, Romans 12 and, and other passages. And so you think, you know, just like leadership and compassion and giving you know, that one would be um, more endowed to express this and therefore, can be called to, um, you know, this open home kind of ministry? Uh, that's what I, some are given into more, but I think every believer has to have that to a certain extent because we don't know when the Lord leads someone into our place mm. where we need to minister to them. We mm. need to know at least that, remember to show hospitality, says. It is not directed to any one person, but as a body of Christ to each believer, mm. I think, sir. Even yeah. to the Israelites, when God said, you, when you have come out of Egypt, uh, please uh, accept strangers as part of your household. So it's not to some, but to everyone, yes. Remember those days you were in Egypt. Mm. So, well, I read through, read through some of the accounts, right? Uh, so, it, yes. it, uh, especially your personal account, very inspiring. Um, so, it seems that, you know, it goes way beyond hospitality. And it uh, goes into an area where we would call, you know, rehabilitation, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what would you say to that? You know, so let's say some are called to hospitality, you yes. know, and also Bible also talks about, you know, uh, well, going and sending, you know, there were churches which went and people who uh, would go also. Um, so, yeah, in that sense, I just wanted to know, you know, because uh, what, what you have done personally and, you know, uh, some of the things is way beyond hospitality. I would say it is rehabilitation. So just wanted to know about that. Sir. Uh, that's what I, in the uh, beginning, it said, I said, for each one, it is different. Mm. For some, we are called to do more. Mm. But uh, I think everyone should have that uh, heart to open up. Mm. Maybe a, a small stay, a night stay, mm. or maybe four hours. But uh, we are willing to uh, let go of our, uh, uh, let's see, laying down our, giving that time to that, to that person while he's going through depression. We have a, mm. uh, already have a day planned out, but when you see something very 
serious and you need to address it you should have a heart to reach out right yes so um Don't yeah so everybody should take uh, people into their homes and uh, go through each one is given different uh, capacity and ability and calling yeah. and anointing i believe but mm. uh, everyone can uh, do it because in the coming days i believe we need to take people in because because of the persecution increasing mm. because mm. of the people coming from other face i have seen people really homeless and clueless lost mm. in the world really lonely and depressed so right. that's what led me to write this uh, right right so um yeah so so the, the again the issue of um, you know i i won't, I won't say issue or the challenge of being equipped because when it goes into the area of rehabilitation yeah. one should be equipped to handle it correctly yes yes so that was yes. my the intent of my question so um yeah, yeah so just one last question uh, now this is actually about um, you know uh, in a family unit there are children various uh, age groups so um yes. so you know and you know children are easily impressionable and um, yeah. you know and so on so so how does one prepare them you know suppose you're taking on a person of uh, you know maybe loose moral character you know you gave that example of someone from an lg lgbt community coming in and being part of that you know household and so on um where you were narrating you know that particular instance so um so you know how does one prepare one's children who could be young impressionable you know at the same you want to give freedom to the children to be as they are but at the same time you know um, how does one prepare them you know and in your own case or you know and others who have open home ministry so how does one prepare children for this kind of a challenge i think from the beginning sir when we uh, meet as a family it's a uh, it is more lived out they come out with questions we answer mm. them and we also have a responsibility to guard them against this we take time to teach them and uh, warn them about certain things and also when as people from other uh, like this lgbt it's about a book i have read which has uh, mm. really impressed and i have uh, written about that book what has happened in that place but we can take uh, precautions of uh, yeah. not letting them spend time uh, like uh, personally with them without yeah. as a present in that scenario and also yeah yeah, yeah. So probably you can just mention the title of the book for those of us who are interested we could um, you know read that um, yes title and yes, the sir. author you can put it, yeah, yeah you can put it on the chat so chat um, yes sir i have already written i'll put it on the chat yeah and there is um, but uh, mm. too many things sir i didn't have time to uh, mention all that i'll okay. uh, just write those two things uh, which uh, really impressed me so i'll do that thank you yeah, sir you, yeah this particular book and the author uh, i think sure, it had sure. it said some open out something yeah so you can just yeah. mention that house thank key you. to the yes yeah the gospel comes with a house key house key that's right that yeah. you mentioned that so we could read that thank you yeah okay thank um you, thank you so next uh well um um i i had time to just go through a few so that's why i'm just taking time right uh, please excuse me um okay so kennedy is here so kennedy um there can be a, a question to you is um uh you wrote about burnouts um so i i said i saw that so so i just want um you know if you, if you can give us based on the the you know the research if you can give us some inputs on how to prevent burnouts i know it's a very broad scope so how does a, a christian leader prevent burnout maybe just two things you can mention and then i'll ask a follow up question two things two primary things that we should put in place in order to prevent burnouts yeah kennedy yes yeah yeah am i audible um yes you are but there's some kind of an echo when you speak um 
the, I think the first thing is to have some kind of openness and encourage small groupings that people can reach out to each other. Secondly, is to have personal interaction amongst the leaders, top leaders, like your peers, you know, you need to learn with them and seek some professional guidance. Because like when you went through our studies or through my program, I discovered that people keep so many things amongst themselves. They don't even discuss with their colleagues. They don't share anything. They're just suffering in silence. And it leads to a lot of uh, discouragement, fear, anxiety, and even loss of concentration. Mm. So there's the issue of uh, having exercises, interacting with their peers, being participating in community, some of the basic community activities that you could do. Thank you. Right. Um, so the next question is um, also like for people who are going through burnouts, I know it's very closely linked to the first question. So suppose people who are going through burnouts and, uh, and um, you know, uh, so you mentioned some ways of identifying, you know, I could be going through a burnout, but I need not uh, know for sure, you know, that I'm getting burnt out. So what would be some identifying factors, you know, maybe three things if you could mention, and also after that, you know, three ways of coming out of it, right? Three things. Yeah. Okay. One, one of the most identifying, or one of the most leading symptoms that people tend to develop fear there's fear, there's uh, people pulling out, you know, losing relationships. You know, you're not in a relationship either with your family members, with your colleagues, or even with your seniors. Thirdly, is that people tend to get into self-defense. They try to play God. You know, they try to go against the, either the management or the programs. So one of, one of the basic things that once you've seen the symptoms, like fear, lack of concentration. Some even lose appetite. And some even tend to develop suicidal tendencies. Because it's like mm -hmm. they've reached the, their, their goal. They're not, they're not achieving much. Uh, I think even the best to do... Pardon? Yeah, go ahead, please. Pardon? Yeah. The, the, the best thing to do is first to... Just the way I said before, once you've seen all these symptoms coming out there, eh, and you, in case where some in some organization where you need to do an evaluation score, you need to have some evaluation score where you check the performance against or even how people are reporting to work, or even people are meeting their targets or their accomplishments. So you need to undergo and check all those things. If they're not meeting, there must be a reason why. So occasionally it's just good to do a small evaluation of yourself. Then another thing is also good to pray over everything. Because like you see even in the Bible, cases of Elijah, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I think he doesn't even wrote the book of Lamentation. He underwent a lot. And to some of these things, they come out because people don't have enough rest. They don't have enough rest for yourself. You don't uh, have good interaction amongst your peers or among your colleagues. You're not even concentrating on God. You're not seeing the value of even prayers on God in your life. Thank you. Right. Fine, Kennedy. Thank you. Um... Thank you for that. Okay. Um, um, is the Maxon Sakia with us? Uh, Maxon. Okay. No. Okay. Um, then. Okay. Um, is Kung Buyu with us? Kung. Kung. Okay. Kung, you're here. Okay. Kung, your uh, question for you is: um, You know, how does one? You know, you wrote about um, the role of art um, in ministry and, uh, you know, the importance of art and wonderful that you, you know, uh, broke that down uh, across different forms of expression. So, you know, um, how does one prevent the danger of idolizing the art, the art form itself? You know, like the art form is beautiful. It's uh, you know it's it's we know it's a way to express uh, a way to communicate uh, the beauty of God. But how do we? How does one? You know maybe three things you can share. You know how does one prevent the danger of idolizing the uh, the art form, um, which of course comes from God, uh, instead of you know uh, 
uh, yeah so that's that's how do, how do we prevent the danger of idolizing the art form and um, you know in, and giving the lord the second priority or second uh, or not giving priority in the expression of that art form so how does one do that um i think it would be like uh like uh i was mentioning in the thing like so many uh, there's like uh, so many different art forms but like um first like for the art uh like the artist uh i think uh if in a church like um we're saying like uh i mean i was telling about the importance of uh, creative arts in the body of christ like for for a church uh if you're gonna portray this um uh, Art, creative forms of art in the church like uh i think it would be uh one thing like to check uh like if the person is like uh, the character wise like uh, uh whether they are not um if they're really doing it to glorify god and uh not doing it for uh just for uh, business or uh, for self-promotion and uh yeah i mean like first uh checking their character by observing them and like training them like if if i'm the if i have a church and i want to do uh creative arts in my church uh maybe like before uh before doing giving them opportunity like i would uh, uh see if they have the vision if they have what uh i want to uh show to the others and like uh, mm. yeah. yeah yeah i get your point like this is uh okay like checking the motivation of the artist but me as a let's say as a creative person or you as a creative person what what are some of those checks that we should have in place so that we don't idolize the art form you know or like music or painting or sculpture whatever or dance you know that i don't idolize the art form me personally because you know there's a drawing to that art form because god put it there but how do i not idolize it yeah uh, i think some of the checklists would be like uh why are you doing it like uh why am i doing this uh for whom am i doing it like those questions like uh and uh, what am i trying to uh do it yeah um, Okay, so um, so what can um, as a church, uh, you know, a local church, you know, what what advice recommendation would you give? Um, maybe it's an established church; it's been there, right, for many years, and uh, and art is something that they've never been thought of, right? So how would you know maybe a three-stage process? How would they go about, um, you know, into creative arts as part of their ministry? Um, how, what would you recommend? Um, like some of the churches, like they already kind of uh, have uh, some of them like uh, uh, worship dance and uh, all of that. But like for uh, uh, no, start... let's take a church which does not have any of this. You know, established church, been there for many years, doing wonderful ministry. Right, so mm -hmm. these lives are being changed, souls are being saved. So in such a church, which has got a proven track record of ministry, for them to get into this, so what would you advise? What would you recommend? Like um, giving opportunities for uh, reaching out to others, uh, like uh, in the church, uh, like kind of like have the feedback from the church like of what uh like for the origin for the young and the children and, uh, yeah like that and start off uh, by seeing like uh, what what how is the church uh, what are the ways in which like we can serve the church and uh, yeah okay thank you thank you Kung um okay i think we'll have one more um before we close uh, so next class we'll you know we'll look at all the others um so um i just close with um, um 
as uh, is uh, Shrikmar on the call? No. Okay. Uh, Tarun, would you like to pick it up? Um, so Tarun, um, so yes. yeah, so your uh, research very you know informative, very interesting as well. So, so the thing is now, um, you know, for the for the common man, right? Uh, to um, I mean, th th this actually gives us the grandeur of God, the, you know, the, the wonderful um, aspect of His design and so on. So uh, how would that, you know, kind of for the common man, right? Uh, just talking about someone who doesn't have an intellectual bent of mind or whatever, you know, who's struggling with life. And all, how would you, you know, kind of uh, uh, this understanding, how would we translate that uh, in order to minister to that uh, person? I don't know if I'm clear, you know, to, yeah, someone, let's say uh, a person, uh, who doesn't understand the facts and figures and everything that uh, you know what we're uh, we're sharing but then it's from a different uh, you know demograph altogether so how would this relate to them would it relate first of all and uh, you know how would we make that connection okay yeah it's a good question i think it it will relate definitely and it's an easy way to uh, it is easier much easier for us to work with a common man because he doesn't have a, a unlearning experience mm. that is necessary <laughs> because uh, for those who are really studying in science and believing and keeping their faith on science mm. and uh, reasoning all that in science there's an unlearning that needs to be done uh, to fill that uh, reason with god uh, but if you if someone is not so knowledgeable and not into this the very understanding of all the beauty and if they reason right from the beginning they would discover god a lot more faster and it's going to be much easier for them mm. uh, and i think yeah the creation around and all the things that are hidden is uh is the first thing that god has given us and that's what the romans says as well that that's where we we don't find any excuse that god exists so that's it, mm. it's a good point to start not knowing things yeah so um so would we still share about the intricacies, the details of it, or would we take a different approach, um, you know, to... Uh, yeah, it, the best thing would be to uh, um, give the uh, reason first why and answer it with God and then come backwards. That gives, that helps us uh, wonder and understand and stay uh, in that uh, thought of glorifying God all through as we explore. It's like for a kid, if we, if I take a kid and uh, try, try to explain him what is gravitation using physics, it mm. would complicate things. But uh, if I say Earth hangs in there because God put it there, and mm. how did he do that? And then I start answering him. Then every, every part of the answer that comes from how did he do that, he will connect back to God and understand how big God is. But if I start the other way around, speaking about gravity, the sun, moon, and the earth, and the forces, and how it hangs, and then finally go back to God, by that time, he would have been lost in the gaps. So mm. it's it's a good way to go from God first. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Sarun. Thank you. Um, so thanks, everyone. Those of, those of you who shared, uh, as, uh, it was great just going through uh, all the reports and uh yeah I, of course it would have been great if, if we had time for each one to you know present make the presentation uh, in the class uh, but yeah given the nature of time and also the number of uh, participants we couldn't do that All right thank you so much so we'll meet again next uh, tuesday uh, 25th and then we'll go through the rest so maybe if you have a like a student whatsapp group please uh, tell the others to be present um because this is graded, right, for five marks. So it'll be good if they are there uh, for that as well. Right. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor.